Hello, welcome uh, to today's lecture. I hope you had the uh, opportunity to go through the notes of the last class. Uh, what we discussed was uh, essentially the mechanism of the uh, McMurray coupling, how uh, McMurray coupling can allow direct formation of the olefins from the ketones in an intermolecular as well as intramolecular fashion. Uh, forming uh, different kinds of uh, cyclic systems or acyclic systems. But since the uh, formation of the acyclic uh, molecules uh, did not have a control over stereochemistry, we considered several uh, possibilities of the mechanism. And uh, we ruled out uh, the two possibilities uh, in which uh, the uh, hydroxy groups could be attached uh, to one titanium or to different titanium uh, these atoms. And of course, then we uh, settle for the mechanism in which uh, the uh, coordination or the kind of attachment to the titanium zero surface allows the reaction to proceed. Uh, the conditions we discussed also where, where we can uh, straight away stop the reaction uh, after the coupling up to the diol stage and we also can allow this diol uh, under the same conditions uh, in a refluxing way to form the corresponding olefin. This also can be done both uh, in an intermolecular as well as intramolecular fashion. So uh, we these uh, detailed uh, titanium zero base McMurray coupling uh, we uh, had discussed mechanistically and uh, also saw the uh, synthesis of humulene which is relatively difficult to do under normal conditions but this one step procedure allows the formation of medium size ring also. Of course, we discussed the disadvantages also that uh, these conditions uh, do not allow uh, uh, many other functional groups to be tolerated but then there are advantages of getting such a coupling in one step. Then we uh, discussed the reduction of alpha beta unsaturated systems, especially the bicyclic uh, enone systems where the hydrogen or the electrophile attaches at the junction. And uh, obviously, uh, we uh, came out with a discussion in which the uh, incoming electrophile attaches always from the uh, axial side. Uh, and not from the equatorial side. There were again three possibilities that we considered, the three types of conformations, cis decaline having two different types of possibilities and trans decaline having one possibility and we ruled out based on steric factors as well as stereoelectronic factors and uh, settled for the uh, formation of a product like this which is very useful in the steroidal systems or interferoid systems based on the predictions or, or the rule devised by Gilbert Stork. Now we look at uh, new reducing agents uh, which is uh, a basically a silane based reducing agent. So uh, as we can see that uh, there are many uh, commonly used reducing agents are uh, reactive complex metal hydrides that are soluble in organic solvents. So uh, like for example, sodium borohydride or lithium aluminum hydride or dibol or likewise similar reagents having different organic ligands on the hydride carrier atom uh, are also commonly used. We have discussed all these earlier cases. For example, if we uh, take uh, in the case of lithium aluminum hydride, we can have the OR here and we can have a reagent of this type where we uh, increase the bulk and also the hydrophobicity. So this type of uh, various molecules uh, are soluble in organic uh, solvents uh, in or at least partially 
soluble in organic solvents and the reductions can be carried out. Uh, simple hydrides such as uh, lithium hydride or sodium hydride and potassium hydride are not uh, good reducing agents as they are not really soluble in organic solvents. Of course, they react violently with uh, protic solvents and uh, obviously do not dissolve in other solvents such as ether or tetrahydrofuran. Uh, however, uh, because they are ionic and they are uh, kind of uh, hard anions they behave as strong bases. So, uh, these are used as strong bases to remove uh, an acidic proton to generate an anion. So, um, in this respect um, we have to see uh, other possibilities of uh, uh, developing reducing agents and in that respect uh, these silanes uh, behave as a good reducing agents. It is a new uh, aspect of uh, reduction and uh, silanes such as uh, say you have R3 Si and there is a hydrogen attached. So, such reducing agents have been um, utilized uh, in organic chemistry and we will see how, what they are and how do they function. Now, the useful reducing properties of uh, diborane for example, B2S6 are uh, essentially due to the monomeric uh, borane and these monomeric boranes can be prepared as say you have uh, dimethyl sulfide borane uh, complex or THF uh, borane complex. So, either we have uh, uh, you have this uh, positive charge here and the negative charge here either we have this complex or this complex. Uh, they are having or carrying monomeric uh, borane. Uh, in addition to these uh, H.C. Brown has developed a large number of uh, uh, reducing agents based on boron and uh, 9 bora bicyclic uh, nonane or DC amyl borane which we discussed. Uh, this is the DC amyl borane and this is uh, 9 bora bicyclic nonane are uh, some of the reducing agents based on boron which um, are not dimeric because of the steric bulk and they need not be stabilized like dimethyl sulfide or tetrahydrofuran are very useful reducing agents and they are bulky reducing agents and they offer similar type of reactivity as normal borane but then with a modified uh, reactivity in terms of steric hindrance. Since electronegativity uh, and ionization potential of silicon uh, is close to boron, so as you can see here 1.90 and 2.04 and 8.15 electron volt and 8.30 electron volt, so they are very close to each other the silicon and the boron. Therefore, suitable derivatives of the pyrophoric gas silane. Now, if we start analyzing BH3 which is uh, existing as uh, B2S6 and if we compare it with SiH4 there is a there is a problem. The problem is that this is like a low boiling uh, gas and of course, it, it catches fire. Uh, B2S6 can be stabilized, but this is uh, not stabilized easily and therefore, although there is a uh, comparison in terms of electronegativity and ionization potential it is not easy to uh, use uh, this silane uh, as a reducing agent as a gas. But then there are uh, many modifications just the way such modifications have been done uh, for the boron and uh, they have um, the chemists have also done the modifications on the silicon and uh, a variety of silane derivatives have been introduced to act as uh, hydride donors. This is of course, as I mentioned in view of the fact that uh, SiH4 is uh, pyrophoric and difficult to handle. Now, in most of the cases they act as hydride donors, but in some cases it has also been found that some of the silicon derivatives act uh, as uh, uh, hydrogen transfer agents in radical uh, fashion. 
Now the commonly used silents which have uh, got a lot of popularity include triethylsilane uh, of this kind for example uh, of this type triethylsilane then phenylsilane which has a structure of this kind that means three hydrogens have been replaced by the phenyl group or diphenylsilane of this kind where two hydrogens have been replaced by two phenyls and of course uh, diphenyl chlorosilane in which uh, one of the hydrogens has been replaced by the chlorine and of course two hydrogens have been replaced by the phenyl then you have trichlorosilane and then of course tetraphenyl disilane of this kind and in a similar fashion uh, there is one uh, a very interesting uh, reagent which is tristrimethylsilylsilane this is what is a tristrimethylsilylsilane which is um, which is sterically hindered so these are the various kinds of uh, silanes which have been introduced uh, in order to avoid the usage of uh, pyrophoric uh, sih4 and of course these reagents are uh, relatively easy to handle. A few examples that uh, uh, are shown here where uh, silanes can be used as a reducing agents are like for example one starts with a, with a tertiary alcohol and in the presence of H plus now we can uh, carry out reactions of uh, different types of silanes very easily in the presence of uh, uh, acid they are not affected uh, because the silicon hydrogen bond is not uh, ionic it is covalent and therefore uh, it is easy to uh, carry out the reaction under protic conditions and as you can see here if you take a tertiary alcohol the hydride is transferred from the silane to the carbocation which is what is going to form here as as uh, like this and to this the hydrogen from the silane uh, say for example r3 uh, prime here is transferred to this to this and the product is this formed now this particular uh, cation which is formed here would obviously um, has to be uh, taken care of so the positive charge that is going to form here will react with the nucleophile present in the reaction medium which can be water or it can also original alcohol. So one can expect this to form but essentially this is what is going to form this can form a little bit if the alcohol allows the reaction to take place on the silicon plus. As you can see here the uh, uh, this is the benzylic alcohol here and it is relatively easy to form the corresponding benzylic cation and once the benzylic cation is formed so you have a, a, a relatively stable benzylic uh, cation and uh, that benzylic cation then gets reduced here although it is a primary cation but it is benzylic therefore reduction gives this particular product. Now we can uh, see uh, such a reaction occurring on a primary bromide but having a cyclohexane ring system. Uh, I am very sure that most of you know what this reaction is going to be going through is uh, if we form the uh, corresponding cation here which is what is going to happen when this uh, bromide reacts with a Lewis acid like aluminum chloride. So the aluminum chloride will take away the bromide ion from here and will generate the, uh, the corresponding primary cation. But then this primary cation immediately undergoes a hydride shift, one to hydride shift leading to the formation of the corresponding tertiary cation. And then this tertiary cation as you can see that uh, can react with Triethyl silyl uh, having a deuterium, uh, so it is a uh, it's a isotope of the hydrogen which allows the introduction of a deuterium 
atom at this junction. So, we can easily get the corresponding deuterated molecule using triethyl silyl uh, which having deuterium. Um, we can also see as uh, uh, similar type of uh, carbocation based reactions if we start with a cycloheptyl bromide uh, th they got 39 percent of the uh, direct uh, reduction and 26 percent uh, after the rearrangement. That means here again one can expect the, the cation to form in here, but then there is a there is a shift of uh, this particular uh, bond to form a primary uh, cation which is what would look similar to what we did it earlier and uh, then this leads to again carbocation uh, shift and forming this tertiary cation and that is what is leading to the formation of uh, this particular molecule in 26 percent yield. Uh, but uh, it is interesting to see that if we take a uh, symbol 1 pentene, so something like this, if we take uh, here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, this does not get reduced because we uh, do not have uh, a strong possibility of generating a, a stabilized uh, or stable cation. On the other hand, if we take uh, 1 methyl cyclohexene, it can easily form the corresponding uh, tertiary cation. Uh, something like this where the uh, positive charge is here and the reduction can lead to the formation of uh, such a molecule. So, there is a contrast between the two of them this cannot form a stable cation whereas this can form stable cation and therefore the reaction takes place. So, uh, what I want to apply here is that the reduction of uh, molecules which are uh, easy to form a cation uh, can easily, easily give the reduction reduced product and one can get the corresponding uh, deoxygenated product. If it is from an alcohol or if uh, it is from a halide then obviously it is also a replacement of the carbon halogen bond with carbon hydrogen bond. If we uh, take the triethyl silane uh, and uh, we use uh, rhodium uh, reagent or a catalyst, then it is found that it proceeds via an enol silyl ether. That means a reduction does occur at this junction because it is now modified reducing agent and it, it forms the corresponding enol silyl ether which upon uh, hydrolysis get, give the, to the corresponding ketone where there is a hydrogen attached here. So, there is a hydrogen attached here. Now, how does this reaction occur? Uh, we would like to see. So, if we take uh, an enone uh, of this kind and uh, react with uh, a silane reagent in the presence of this uh, uh, Wilkinson's catalyst, then uh, it is found that uh, these two different types of reducing agents uh, were basically utilized and they lead to uh, two different types of products. For example, the first reducing agent in which uh, there is only one hydrogen that means uh, this particular reagent contains uh, uh, one hydrogen and that gives the, um, the 98 percent of the corresponding saturated ketone via obviously enol silyl ether. That means this reaction must be going via the uh, enol silyl ether and this gives the corresponding ketone. So, this is the intermediate that must be forming. While in the second case when there are uh, two hydrogens uh, PH2 SI H2 uh, it is seen now that uh, the reduction uh, takes place uh, directly onto the carbonyl uh, carbon. In this case the reaction had taken place at the fourth carbon here. 
So uh, we have to see that how does it uh, happen. So if we have this uh, catalyst rhodium catalyst and react with any uh, silane this is what we are expecting to get it where R3 can be these 3 R's can be 2 R's and uh, one more hydrogen or whatever. So when this particular uh, uh, modified reagent interacts with the enone it is proposed that this uh, interacts with the rhodium here with through the oxygen and immediately there is a carbon rhodium bond forming such an intermediate. Now this is the first intermediate that can form. Now this intermediate can be uh, uh, in such a way that this particular part of the uh, uh, intermediate can go to the fourth position that is uh, on the uh, other end of the double bond uh, forming this intermediate where if the hydrogen is transferred to this carbon then we get this intermediate which is 1,4 addition and after hydrolysis here H plus water can give this ketone. But uh, if this hydrogen is directly transferred to uh, this particular carbon atom and the rhodium goes off then we get uh, one two reduction product uh, which upon hydrolysis so we can say that upon hydrolysis of the oxygen silicon bond we get one two addition. So you can have either a one two addition or a one four addition if we invoke such intermediates. Now we see now how it is happening. What uh, has been suggested is in the case of uh, di and tri hydrosilanes that means if we have uh, more of uh, hydrogens attached the bulkiness of the siloxy group is much smaller. So that means if, uh, if this particular part is considered and if there are tri hydro di or tri hydro that means we are talking about R H 2 uh, Si O kind of species we are talking about it or trihydro you have H3 SiO part of it. That means the bulkiness of the siloxy group is, is reduced is smaller uh, than that one can think about monohydrosilane. So for example if you have here R2 H SiO so you have two of the R groups and only one hydrogen here so this is a monohyd hydrosilane, this is a dihydrosilane, this is a trihydrosilane. So uh, the bulkiness of the uh, siloxy group is much smaller in, uh, in these cases compared to monohydrosilanes. And the hydride shift is easier since the participation of the polyhydrosilanes in the hydride migration step is much easier. Like for example, if we have something like this then the, uh, the hydrogen is immediately migrated here. Uh, then of monohydrosilanes either by steric reasons or by reactivity for oxidative addition. Thus one two addition takes place. So in such cases where the, uh, uh, the uh, bulkiness is uh, reduced we get the hydrogen transfer because there is not much steric hindrance and therefore this is relatively stable and immediately hydrogen is transferred. Now one two addition takes place exclusively especially when the hydro pyrolyhydrosilanes are used in high concentration. So you use you allow this where the R3 groups are more of hydrogens and therefore this is relatively stable there is not much steric hindrance and it goes. In the case of monohydrosilanes when there is uh, hydrogen only is one present that means on the rhodium there is only one uh, hydrogen has come from the silane that we have used and R3 is uh, larger groups both the steric and through bond electronic effect of silyl group on the nature of the allylic system with regard to the relative ease of isomerization. Now this is uh, particularly isomerizing to this 
why it is isomerizing? While, while isomerizing this particular carbon uh, uh, rhodium bond is breaking and going to this one here. During the process there will be a delta positive which is going to be generated here which is an allylic system. That is what is uh, allowing it to migrate and also the steric hindrance. The steric hindrance between the siloxy group and the rhodium path is large when it is mono hydrogen containing silane and therefore the steric hindrance allows it to move and uh, away from the system and it goes to the uh, to the other end of the double bond and also during the process you have delta positive that delta positive will be stabilized by the double bond as well as by the silicon through a beta silicon effect. And therefore thus uh, we get the 1,4 addition exclusively especially when monohydrosilines are used in low concentration. So this is how um, the reaction is perceived and the reaction occurs uh, in, uh, in, in a way that we can uh, tune the reducing agent and therefore you can have either 1,2 reduction or 1,4 reduction. We can also carry out reductions of uh, ketones or aldehydes using triethylsilane. And uh, for example, if we take a ketone of this type uh, with triethylsilane, uh, in um, uh, aqueous medium if we have an acid then of course we get the corresponding alcohol and triethylsilinol as the byproduct. And in a similar fashion if we take the ketone and reduce uh, in the presence of an alcohol like R2OH then under acidic conditions with triethylsilane what we get is the corresponding ether and again triethylsilinol comes out as the byproduct. The way it has been uh, perceived or, or uh, rationalized is that the ketone under acidic condition gets first protonated and the water attacks onto this particular carbon atom and uh, then uh, one forms the uh, particular uh, dihydroxy uh, compound geminal dihydroxy compound which is unstable of course it will be in equilibrium with the ketone. Now if uh, one of the two hydroxy groups say for example this one gets protonated then what one could expect to get is uh, a oxonium ion of this kind by the loss of water. Now this particular oxonium ion then can react with triethylsilane and get reduced to lead to the formation of this particular alcohol and of course triethylsilinol will come out. In a similar fashion if we take this uh, ketone and react with uh, an alcohol uh, in the presence of H plus then of course what we expect to form is a hemiacetal of this kind because proton will protonate the carbonyl oxygen and the alcohol will attack as a nucleophile to form this hemiacetal which can of course lose water to form this oxonium ion similar to what we saw it here but now we have this OR2 in the uh, molecule and now when this uh, oxonium ion gets reduced with silane, then of course we get the corresponding ether and of course uh, we'll get the triethylsilanol as the byproduct. Now this is how the triethylsilane has been utilized for the reduction of uh, carbonyl compounds under different conditions. But in addition to triethylsilane or different kinds of silanes, uh, people have also started using polymethyl hydrosiloxane PMHS which is shown as like this here and it is a relatively inexpensive non-toxic air and moisture stable liquid. It is of course a polymeric liquid and it has been found to be an effective hydride reducing agent as an alternate to monomeric silane reducing agents such as triethylsilane. So we will see how the reactivity of this PMHS can be uh, uh, utilized for the reduction of different kinds of substrates. So uh, till uh, the next class uh, uh, we will uh, stop it here and uh, we will discuss other aspects of this PMHS and other reducing agents in the next class till then bye. Thank you.